So, this is for my blog post, God as a 10-dimensional being. Well, he's the only 10-dimensional being, but we'll, we'll get jump right in there. Um, so, in geometry class, like, okay, about 10, 10 dimensions, there really are 10 dimensions. There's not, you know, three or ju even just four dimensions. There's many more. Um, even though in geometry they only teach you three dimensions, uh, it's actually, there's actually 10 dimensions. Uh, at least according to string theory, which is what I'm going to be applying to God today. So, uh, <clears throat> the first three dimensions from geometry class are, I call them the corporal dimensions because they're physical, the physical dimensions, because um, they're tangible, but they are made up of length, area, and volume, essentially, give or take. Uh, and those are the basic three. Now, string theory is a secular science. Uh, it tries to hypothesize about how our universe works, how our existence works, based on the existence of other dimensions beyond the ones that we perceive. Uh, this is in order to understand the inner workings of the cosmos and things like that. That's what the secular one is for. I'm going to apply my own version of this because it's not exactly the same. Um, it's what I've found through my own studies uh, and because I'm a Christian. Um, I'm going to apply my own version to God and the Bible, well, mostly just God, but also the Bible, uh, to help me and you guys, whoever's watching this and reading this, uh, attempt to fathom why, you know, God is how he is and try to imagine him as this infinite, super powerful being. It's kind of hard to wrap your brain around that, try to visualize that, or conceptualize that, excuse me. Um, quick public service announcement. Keep in mind, this is only scientific speculation. This isn't theology. I'm not taking this out of the Bible or anything. This is me. You're not going to hear this in like a sermon at church. Um, it's, it's just not the same. Um, alright, so that, that's all the way. To understand God as a ten-dimensional being, we first have to understand the ten dimensions. Uh, the first are relatively simple. I mean, after all, you learned them in geometry class. Uh, it, most people pretty much know what they are. But we're just gonna go over them real quick to make sure you understand. First dimension, it's linear. So it's taking two points and connecting them. So, there's not really a way you can travel in just one dimension at a time. At least not the first and second dimension, that's for sure. Uh, but to visualize this, look right there. That is a line. First dimension, right there. That's not too bad. Just remember, first dimension, linear. Um, a ray also is... Actually, that's a line segment, but same difference. It's connecting two points. Um, time, or Okay, we'll get into that later. A ray or a line from geometry class is pretty much what the first dimension is. And the closest thing you can get to traveling on the first dimension is walking in a straight line. That's about it. Uh, pfft, second dimension. That would be length and width or area. It's like all the second dimension is is adding a little bit more to the concept of the first dimension. So in this case, you're adding length and width. And while it doesn't have to be a shape that has closed corners, a square is a good example of... Forgive my bad artistry. A square is a prime example of a two-dimensional object. Anywhere you go, be it walking, driving, anytime you take a turn or move in anything but a straight line um, in your day-to-day -day stuff, be it in a car or walking or on a bike, that is the closest you can get to traveling two-dimensionally. It's kind of impossible to travel in, like I said before, in just like the first or second dimension. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is the first three dimensions, each one builds off the last. So until you get to the third dimension, which is what we are physically, uh, you can't really travel through them uh, unless it's through the third dimension. Because technically you're traveling through all three. If you, but you can't just travel through one or two. You have to go through the third. It's, it's weird, but that's the, what we're trying to get at. We're not trying to travel through dimensions. We're just trying to explain them. So the third dimension is cubic or volume-wise. Um, some string theorists describe it as a fold in order to for you to better understand the next theories, but I'm just going to go with what everyone understands, and that's like a cube. Um, that's a poor interpretation of cube, but that's a cube. <clears throat> All right. Um, flight is the truest form of three-dimensional travel. That's as close as you're going to get to the... Traveling, I mean, that is three-dimensional travel. It's not close to you can get it. It just is. Um, so that's, that's not too bad. It's pretty simple, right? Um, if it's not simple to you, then hit the close button on your browser because you're never going to understand the rest of it if you didn't understand that. Um, either that or I'm just really bad at this and I shouldn't be doing it. But either way, hit the close button. Um, those first three, the first three dimensions, uh, phew, linear, area, and cubic-ishness, those three are the building blocks, the basis for understanding the rest of the next six. The tenth dimension doesn't count because that's like a whole separate walk in the park there. That's not even the same. That's, that's a whole different ballgame. Um, the dimensions come in groups of three. You obviously have your first three, and then you have four through six and seven through nine, and then there's obviously the tenth dimension, but that doesn't count. In other words, four and seven are sort of like the first dimension in that they are linear. They travel in a straight line, A to B. Um, we'll get into that when I cover each of these dimensions. Two, five, and eight 
uh, those are all just, it's just like before, just adding a little bit more to the concept of the previous dimension, um, just kind of like building off of it. The first dimension, fourth dimension, seventh dimension are kind of the basis where they're following dimensions in their groups. And again, they come in groups of three except for the tenth one. And three, six, and nine are basically cubic-ish, all-encompassing kind of of the previous ones. So now that you don't understand, we can jump to the rest of the dimensions. Hopefully you'll understand later. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe not. Alright. Fourth dimension. Duration. Okay. Um, you, the plebeians usually call it time. I'm not saying you guys are plebeians. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of people call it time. But string theorists and me call it duration. I've always said that. And when I first studied this, because I've always been like a, a time theorist because I wanted to time travel until I found out it's impossible. Um... But it's really duration. Time is just a, a way to measure it. Doctor Who, though he's an example of time travel, is a really, really bad example because that isn't, like, you don't time travel. But he's an example of someone who time travel. Travels through the fourth dimension. <clears throat> Excuse me. And his science is just bad, so we're not going to go into that. I love, I love watching his shows, but Doctor Who is just wrong. Fifth dimension is the dimension of choice. Now, this is hard. I'm going to write it down for you guys. Um, well, this is going to be hard to draw. It's just going to be stick figures if you're okay with that, guys. So, this is the dimension of choice. And it's kind of hard to conceptualize because it covers your entire lifespan. But we're going to cover just a quick snippet. By the way, units of measurement for time are called planks, but we're going to get into that in a minute. Um, yeah, as you can see, time, the fourth dimension, back to the fourth dimension, uh, is... Sorry about that. I was busy drawing stuff. And then blah. All right. Time is linear because you can only move forward in time. There's no... There is no moving back in time. We're only ever moving positive distance. Just like we do in every other dimension. There's only positive gain. You can't have a negative value when it comes to existence. I'm sorry. Traveling back in time is impossible. But Well, traveling too far forward in time is impossible too, but theoretically it could happen. But traveling back in time is impossible because it's traveling negative distance. Traveling forward in time, you're not actually traveling anywhere. You're just speeding up. Which is why speed and gravity and all that other stuff actually is applicable in time travel. But that different subject. I'm sorry, I digress. All right, fifth dimension. Dimension of choice. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but here's all your choices. You can make a choice right here on whether to take a medicine for, having, if, for when you have cancer, to take medicine to help you, to do experimental treatments, or to just pray that God heals you. This is this right here. That's taking medicine. You die, and you end up with a pile of goo or ash, whatever. And this right here is praying and ask God to heal you, and this is doing experimental treatment. Uh, as you can see, he has three heads. So that's your that's sort of like choice right there. Um, you basically, you make a choice, and then all those different choices exist right up until you make the choice for that certain period of your life, whatever. When it comes to that moment when you make the choice, they all exist at the same time, sort of. Um... Then once you make it, all the other possible choices cease to exist because you've already taken that choice. Because there can't be multiple versions of you yet in the fifth year, uh, fifth dimension. That's getting in the sixth dimension, which, yay, we're jumping right into the sixth dimension. And that is where we have multiple versions of yourself. Each person has their alternate version. You can apply this to universes as well, like a parallel universe, like Justice League of America and stuff like that. But seriously, though, like, um, it's... It's like different versions of you all together, not just different choices, but the entire different versions of you. Like, if you're when you were a baby, uh, you either grew up to be who you are now, or you grew up to be this rich as butt millionaire prodigy or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's that version too, but you can't get to that version now because now you're someone else. So it, it's weird. It gets confusing, but that's basically just different versions of you. Just think of think of the Justice League TV show where there's the alternate Justice League. That's the best I can come up with. Yeah. So that wasn't so bad. I mean, those are just exactly like. The first three, only not at all. Uh, but don't worry. Now that we're past those three, the fourth through sixth dimensions, these next ones are way more compl complicated. So, you know, don't worry, don't freak out. They're just way more complicated. And I'm just kind of sitting here hoping your head doesn't explode and brain matter get all over your screen because that'd be disgusting. Um, but yeah, yeah, sixth dimension, different versions of you, sort of like those weight loss ads. That's the best explanation, actually, for those. All right, the last three, well, the last group of three dimensions. Um, seventh dimension. This one was so confusing. I mean, these are so confusing. I actually had to go and study them a second time, look up some more videos on these, and look up some more uh, websites. Um, they're all the possible... Take If you take all the possible versions of our universe from the sixth dimension, like what if Adam and Eve hadn't sinned, that would be another option. Um, 
and connect, but they did, so that's too bad. And then connected it to another universe, like, what if Adam and Eve were unicorns, and Earth was made entirely out of different shades of pink? And then, you know, and then also having all the possible outcomes like do or don't sin. That would be, connecting those two universes would be the seventh dimension. Because remember, it's a line, it's connecting two points. Uh, the best example of another universe besides pink and unicorns is, like, one without gravity. Like, the laws were different. Um, eighth dimension, this one's so crazy, it's like, you know... Trying to understand the eighth dimension is like asking if God farts or not. Like, that's pretty much the best. But uh, not really. Like, it's a bit more simple than that. It is a split from the connection of the previous two universes that I just mentioned to an e even more different universe. Like, not only are they unicorns in a pink world, but instead of pink, it's yellow, and they're uniducks. Like, ducks with unicorn horns. Like, and they're still Adam and even able to talk. Like, that's... It's like connecting all three of those universes together in, like, this weird shape. I mean, it can be more universes than that, even. But it's connecting them together... In like this cosmic shape. Yeah. It's like three or, f three or more different creation stories. Yeah. So that's the eighth dimension. And again, that's just tacking on, you know, a little bit to the seventh dimension. And the ninth dimension, that's pretty easy. That's just being able to exist in multiple universes at the, so at the same time. Or at least be able to see them all at once. So nothing too serious. That's pretty easy. Simple. Just existing in multiple universes as, a, as one person. Or, at or being able to travel instantaneously between them is actually a better description of that. Yeah. Being able to travel instantaneously between the different universes. Like, I mean different creations altogether. Different starting points. Not just different versions of, like, what if Adam and Eve had sinned or not. And what if dinosaurs were still around. Not just that, but, like, what if there were no dinosaurs there was only these weird duck-looking thingies. Like, that's what I'm talking about. All right. So that, those weren't too bad either. Um, you understand the first through ninth. It's basically just the first, fourth, and seventh are linear. Uh, the ones that come right after those are just tacking on a little extra. And then the third, sixth, and ninth are basically cubic-ish. Alright, so now we get to the 10th, and this is, like, the really exciting part. Um, if you take all the possible outcomes, all the possible, you know, you know what, let, before I jump into this, let's do the 7th through 9th again. I got a couple, I got an idea. Alright, 7th dimension is this apple. I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of, yeah, you can tell. Alright, so this is a dark colored apple, for some reason, yeah, this is a black and white video, so sorry. But this is a red apple, okay, red delicious, mm. alright, let's bite into this real quick. Mm. So yeah, red apple. Mm. So say the core, the core of the apple, which I'm not at yet, but who cares? Inside the core of the apple. Say that's the start. That's the creation story. Will you get out of here, dog? Shoot. Good thing. There's food, so she has to beg. Um, the core is the start of this universe. This is a universe, and all through here, the meaty part of the apple, like this part right here. Uh, that right there is the different, all the different versions of our universe based on what chance, what happened, basically on Adam and Eve's choices, essentially. Um, like, what if Satan hadn't rebelled, I guess, I don't know. Um, so that's all the different versions of that. This is a green apple, don't ask me what they're called, I have no idea, I hate these apples. But, uh, that's a green apple, again, all the different versions, core is the start. Now, the seventh dimension is like comparing this red apple to this green apple. Alright, um, they're two different things, maybe a few similarities, different laws, as you can see, this one's kind of taller and skinnier, this is nice and plump and fat, it's like Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber kind of deal, um, so that's the seventh dimension, the eighth dimension, oh wow, how am I gonna do this, is like taking these two apples while they're connected, and then tacking on an orange, right here, an orange, <sighs> yeah, or a banana, or, bo or both, you know what, let's just, let's go ahead, and say, all right, there's those two apples. They're sitting over here. Let's draw a line up here. And there's an apple and a banana. And the orange is over here with that other apple. And it just makes this weird cosmic shape. That is the, the last three, that last group of three. I'm going to finish this apple now. Mm, that's tasty. I like the red ones. So, yeah, a bit of a visual to help you out there. I, I, that's how I understood it. So, anyway, back to 10th ten, dimension. Mm. Imagine taking all of the possible outcomes of each of these universes, all the possible outcomes of all the possible universes, like all the possible creation stories, taking all of them, like what if he did use a big bang, you know, what if creation took 7,000 years instead of 7 days, you know, like all of these possibilities, taking them all, putting them together into a single point, actually in this case into a single being, being able to see and exist in every single version, one of those versions of universes, down to the very minutia, down to the, the first three dimensions, okay? which now we realize are actually the last three. But anyway, uh, take all that, and you have the 10th dimension. 
So what I'm getting at here is not only is God a 10 dimensional being, not only does he exist in all 10 dimensions, God is the 10th dimension. That means that not only does he see all of that other jazz, all that other stuff, but he is actually the source of all the other possible dimensions. That's crazy. You know, I mean, it's, it, it goes right in line with the Bible where God has created everything. He is the source of everything. He is energy. He's not just energy. He is everything. And everything that it could be, everything that wasn't, everything that is. He is the great I am. That's like when the Bible says, when he's saying, you know, I am that I am, it, he's basically saying, I'm, the, I'm like this 10th dimension, I'm the 10th dimension, I'm everything. Like, because that's what ten, the 10th dimension is. Like, the 10th dimension, it does not even connect two points. It's not even linear. It is a single point, which, excuse me, which means only one thing can be the source of that. It's taking all this complicated mess and putting it together in a single existence. And that's God. That's crazy, because that's the only way you can explain it. Even if you believe in the Big Bang Theory, which isn't true, but even if you believe in the Big Bang Theory, who put the Big Bang there in the first place? Who put the matter that exploded there in the first place? If matter cannot be created or destroyed, then how would it get there in the first place? The only one who could do that is one who could bend the laws of this universe. And the only person who can do that is one who exists outside of this universe in multiple universes. And here's the deal. Not only that, but that explains why we don't know currently of there being any other universes. And why, based on our own carnal and biblical knowledge, there are no other versions of this universe. Because God has already seen... And in a way, experience every single possible outcome, every possible way that he could have created this world, any possible way he could have created us, all the different versions of us, all the different versions of how to, to behave around us, like whether or not to give us free choice. He's already seen that based on this theory. And he has decided that what we're living now is the universe that he wanted, which is huge. Because not only does that mean he has to die for our sins in this universe, which he may have, ha he may would have had to do in another universe, but he could have picked one where he wouldn't. But because he gave us free choice and made us in his image, he now has to come and die for us so that we still have a way to get into heaven because we have that free choice and we'll always choose sin unless we repent and actually strive to follow him. So because of that, he actually chose this one. And that just gives me butterflies in my stomach because it's like he chose me, like the me me, over the duck unicorn version of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's awesome. So that's crazy to think about. And that's God as a 10-dimensional being, which just proves that he loves us even more than scientists or even like, me as a normal Christian would have given him credit for it. Because when I look at this, I'm like, wow. He loves me. He not only, not only am I his greatest love in this universe, I'm his greatest love out of all the universes and all the realities. Like, he loves me that much. And he loves you that much, too. As long as you're a person and not some dog or cat watching this video. Because that could happen. I catch my cat watching videos. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, that's pretty mind-blowing. I hope your brains are not splattered all over your screen. I'm sorry that I suck at making videos. But... You know, it's a lot, I can go more in depth and it's easier for me to go more in depth making videos than just writing it because I hate writing. So if you watch this video, good for you because you just learned and got way more out of this post than you would have if you just read the thing, which is kind of dumb because I'm teaching you to be lazy and watch videos instead of doing your own reading, but that's kind of what happened. All right, enough ranting. I'm out. And this has been sponsored by the Duke of the East, East Duchy of Derpshire. All right, that's it. See you later.